Welcome to the SKNAS Week in Review. In this program, we recap major government-related activities over the past week. Coming up, St. Kitts Nevis economy registers jobs growth. Social Security Fund in a strong position. Roadmap for digital growth highlighted. And government working to reduce incidences of HIV AIDS. Those stories and more are next on the SKNIS Week in Review for the period November 29 to December 5, 2019. Hello and welcome. Job numbers in St. Kitts and Nevis are on the rise, representing another positive indicator that the Twin Island Federation continues to move in the right direction. At his monthly press conference on Wednesday, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris reported that figures from Social Security indicate that for the period January to August 2019, there was an average of 25,877 jobs per month, which was higher than the comparative period last year. The Prime Minister said that there were just under 1,500 active employers in St. Kitts and Nevis, as reported by Social Security. He also shared statistics from the Ministry of Finance, indicating that as at the end of October 2019, there were 601 approvals granted for business license applications, the largest approval ever in history. More people are working, more opportunities for our young people. This is the goal of the Team Unity government. And our competent and capable leadership has resulted in more business investment, more tourists, safer streets and communities. The St. Christopher and Nevis tenure of Office of Prime Minister Amendment Bill 2019 was given its second reading in the National Assembly last week, but did not meet the constitutional requirements to be passed. The bill sought to amend the constitution by limiting the tenure of the prime minister to two terms. In order for a constitutional amendment to be successful, it requires support from two-thirds of elected members. Opposition members did not support the bill. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris expressed disappointment. I want to just end on a note of gratitude that we have been able anyway to put our case to the country, to say to the country that this is the best model. This is in keeping with a future, an age of enlightenment for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Still in Parliament news, Senior Minister and Minister Responsible for Social Security, the Honorable Vance Emery, laid on the table of the National Assembly a report of the 12th Actuarial Review of the St. Christopher and Nevis Social Security Fund as of December 31, 2017. He explained that there is good news as it relates to the financial strength of the Social Security Fund. With over $1.5 in reserves, approximately 15 times annual expenditure, the St. Kitts and Nevis Social Security Fund is currently in a strong financial position. And even though contribution income is no longer sufficient to meet total expenditure, investment income is expected to meet the shortfall for several more years. Attorney General and Minister Responsible for Information and Communication Technology, the Honorable Vincent Byron Jr., addressed delegates from across the region attending a two-day forum dubbed a special symposium on the state of Caribbean Internet. The forum began at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort on Wednesday. Honorable Byron Jr. shared a bit about a digital strategy for St. Kitts and Nevis that is expected to be implemented in phases in the coming years. The strategy will be to ensure customer-centric experiences. It shall empower our public servants. It allows for digital government, uh, accessing services and other aspects of government. We hope that we 
can create a data-driven environment and that we would have innovation in government. St. Kitts and Nevis joined the rest of the world in observing International Day of Persons with Disabilities on Tuesday. Minister responsible for social services, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, noted that the international theme promoting the participation of persons with disabilities and their leadership, taking action on the 2030 development agenda, was quite timely. Minister Hamilton said that the St. Kitts and Nevis government will continue to promote inclusivity. As a government, we believe that a person is not inherently disabled. Disability is not a feature of a person. We say that people have health impairments. Some of us need wheelchairs to mobilize. Some of us need seeing eye dogs. Some of us seeing and need assistive technology. Just like some of us need glasses to read or medication to manage pain, or an inhaler to manage asthma. All people have different health impairments at some time in their lives. The difference is that most of the time, your health impairment doesn't stop you from functioning or being included or participating in your community. We have embarked on programs that are designed to offer independence to our differently abled persons. And there is no better place to observe this than at the seat of government, where we have installed an elevator to take persons to and from various floors of the building. Another international commemoration that was observed this week was World AIDS Day. In an address to Mark Sunday's observance, Minister of State with Responsibility for Health, the Honorable Wendy Phipps, said that communities are powerful and positive agents for change in the lives of persons affected by AIDS. Honorable Phipps added that the government is working to improve the situation of HIV AIDS in St. Kitts and Nevis. The Ministry of Health has recently embarked on a number of initiatives to assist in this endeavor. They include an increase in the number of laboratory technicians to handle testing loads, the recruitment of a case manager and additional health educators assigned to the National HIV AIDS program, the rollout of the electronic case-based surveillance system, and improved engagement and support of CSOs to assist with public education, reaching vulnerable groups and increasing advocacy for those who are affected by HIV AIDS. The Department of Community Development and Social Services presented tokens of appreciation to the St. Kitts Scenic Railway on Thursday for its generous contribution to this year's Month of Older Persons observed in October. The seniors were treated to a train ride and bus tour. The presentation was made by the Acting Director of the Department of Social Services, Anne Wigley, to the President and Director of the St. Kitts Scenic Railway, Stephen Heights. You who have lived here your lives on St. Kitts, the older seniors especially, remember the sugar train. Yes. Remember the days of the SSMC and remember when the railway ran for crop. And it, the, the railway today tries to carry on a grand tradition, a, a link back to the days when the sugar trains ran across back of the land. Really? It, it is a great, great honor and we thank you very much for giving this plaque. And finally, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris extends his heartfelt condolences and those of the government and the people of St. Kitts and Nevis to the family and loved ones of Mr. Donald Cable, who has passed away at the age of 65 years old. The retired high-ranking public servant held the post of Controller of Customs from August 1, 1992 to August 15, 2003. That's all for this edition of SKNAS Week in Review. I'm Ian Richards.